This episode of the Close Out Bodyboarding Podcast is brought to you by Bodyboarding Victoria and Attica Wetsuits. The new Attica Winter Range is now available in your favourite bodyboard and surf hardware stores. To stay warm this winter, check out the new Alpha Series featuring liquid seams, gridlock firewall lining and 100% neo span simple stretch for ultimate flux. Or if you're lucky enough to be in a warmer climate, the Amiga Series has you covered with GPS construction, seamless stomach design and tape criticals. Check out the entire range at AtticaWetsuits.com Welcome back to the Closeout Bodyboarding Podcast, an audio experience where a bunch of mates sit around and talk about all things bodyboarding. I'm one of your hosts, Penny Oborn, and joining me live from a dive bar in Tasmania, Chris Watson. How are you, buddy? <laughs> G'day, mate. How are you? I'm not too bad, mate. Where are you? Can you can you give us a map pin, or is it is there not the enough? Is there not enough? Not too bad. So. There's not not enough tin foil hat reception down that part of the world. It's, uh, it's a bit hard done by for reception. They're, they're getting rid of the 3G network and we still... My phone's been on 3G half the time I've been here. <laughs> How's things, mate? I mean, yeah, unfortunately, we've we've missed you a little bit of late. You've been a busy, busy man. How's work? Yeah, very busy. I think I just looked at my diary today and I've travelled the last eight weeks and I said that I'd change job roles and not travel as much, but... Oh, been away at least two days every week so my surfing career is at an all-time low at the moment although hang on hang on a minute i'm gonna stop you right there chris how dare you tell me your surfing career is on hold when correct me if i'm wrong you are the now new autumn poster boy for urban surf in melbourne is this true this is true this is true (laughs) well i I figure, Benny, if um, if I'm going to surf, at least film it so everyone thinks that I surf a lot. Well, you know, it's probably the one thing that urban surf do really well, which is promote via social media, um, which is yeah. great in comparison to some of the other things they're not doing so well, um, <clears throat> including their booking system, yeah. um, which is probably a great opportunity for us to bring up, I guess, a bit of a... An apology for our normal third co-host, Shane Britton, currently gallivanting away along the east coast of Australia on his uh, annual sales trip on behalf of uh, Limited Edition Surf Hardware. I tell you what, I don't know how he gets the gig year in, year out. Poor Marky. (laughs) Every single year gets stuck in the office answering the phone and Shane just packs up his van and takes off for a few weeks and goes surfing, catches up with the boys. Has a good time. So, a little, little bit of a conspiracy theory. Are we sure he's selling bodyboards and fins and wetsuits on this sales trip or is it is it another type of promotional tour? Not sure, mate. Not sure. That's uh, we, we probably can't comment. We'll have to wait for him to get back into the, uh, the big lounge chair to get oh. his version of the story. I know one thing's for sure though, Benny. It's not it's not him going and selling uh, computers or anything technical because um, <laughs> Shane has technical capability. <laughs> well, he got his laptop fixed little... after five years and he still left it at home. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? <laughs> One thing we can probably comment on behalf of Shano is that he did get to experience firsthand the new and so-called improved urban surf uh, in Sydney, uh, which is going to be pretty exciting to hear about. I know he's not the only bodyboarder to have, um, you know, donned the wetsuit and the helmet uh, to get in the salt there. Uh, I know the boys from Versus and NMD had a solid six-hour session out there last week, which was uh, looked pretty mental. What's your take, Chris-O? Oh, I've heard, heard a bit of feedback about it. I believe the pool is shorter, but the wave machine is the same length. And I also believe that the bottom of the pool, they've refined the, I'm going to get this word wrong, the symmetry, I think it's called, which is the shape of the bottom of the pool. Yeah, uh, very interesting to see the clips come out. The water looks pretty clean in there. Um, 
I well, it, it, it always does question. when they first fill it up, mate. Just to really geek out on it, I believe Melbourne they invented their own filtration system where there's now a, a wave garden specific filtration system. So maybe there might be some different things there. Um, but yeah, no, plenty of good clips coming out. And probably one one key thing I saw was a lot of people wearing helmets. Um, yes, which I, I I'm pretty keen to discuss. I mean, my, I guess, personal expectation of the new and improved Sydney Urban Surf was that the wave was potentially going to be significantly bigger. So far, I haven't seen that. Are we, have, we been, have, have we been misled? I never heard it was going to be bigger. Maybe you've got different contacts to me. We will. We do hang out in different uh, circles. <laughs> States, countries. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, mate, speaking of different states and countries, uh, mate, we've got a bit of an interesting episode today, um, a little bit kind of, you know, off the beaten track from what we usually do, all sitting around the same room. I've decided to be a bit selfish and go rogue and uh, have a few really good conversations with some really current and, and really cool people in our sport. And I think it really covers some some really cool topics. First off the bat, uh, I caught up with Tommy Morris, um, absolute hellman from over there in WA, who's currently over in South America. Uh, he recently pulled on the Rash Fest for the first time in a long time and entered the Akike IBC event over there in Chile. Um, yeah. Which, yeah, I mean, in the end, turned out to be a pretty, pretty sick event. Uh, Tristan Roberts took that one out over uh, a Chilean, Joaquin Soto. Um, even yep. the junior final was pretty sick as well. I think it was Michel Arigada. He beat um, Bastian Venegas, who, I correct me, I could be wrong here, but both those guys were from Chile as well. So, for the finals, the waves actually turned on. So, it was super, super exciting. Tommy had some really cool stuff to kind of fill us in on about, um, I guess, the developing progress of the IBC as a as a bodyboarding, um, I guess, business model, which is cool. Uh, he also uh, spilled the dirt a little bit on a little uh, altercation that may or may not have a occurred over there uh, involving uh, Yazdani Castro. So without further ado, let's get stuck into a chat with Tommy. Tommy Morris, how are you, mate? Hey, mate. Good, good. How are you? Yeah, mate. I'm doing really well. I mean, I'm stuck here in, in cold, miserable Victoria. Shano's living his best life traveling up the East Coast at the moment. I think Watto's still digging in a mine somewhere in Tassie. Uh, we're all busy. But um, so are you, mate. Give us a give us a bit of a heads up, mate. Where are you? Um, just I've just arrived back in Iquique in Chile. Um, I just spent a couple of days in Arica on a bit of a strike mission um, up there. But yeah, I've just arrived back in Iquique. Yeah, mate. Oh, yeah, it's been good, mate. Just loving it over here. Beauty. So, mate, give us um, I guess give us a bit of a rundown. Was this was this always on your radar for? for 2024 to have a, have a good crack at doing some of the IBC World Tour events? I guess, yeah, it was definitely on my radar. After doing Maldives last year, I got to link up with a good mate, Matias Diaz, um, and we hadn't seen each other since, like, why, and we were talking about, like, the tour and stuff, and I mentioned that, like, Chile would be sick to come to because I knew there was so many good ways to free surf, not only compete. And he was like, bro, we'll come over, I've got you. Um, and then since we sort of had that chat, I kind of had it in my mind that I was like, yeah, all right, I'm going to go to Hawaii and Chile next year. And that's my goal. And, and here we are. So, um, yeah, and I guess for the IBC part of things, um, it's not necessarily, I came here to chase the IBC. It sort of was more so chasing the waves that are all around <laughs> up and down the coast here. Um, and if I did well on the cold, I do well. If not, um, just, just stack waves up, you know, get as much as much weight as I can under my belt and a bit of footage. So, yeah. yeah. Nice. And how, how's the surf been so far? Uh, pretty unreal. We've had a few few um, rainy onshore days, which is unlike Akike, but um, the first couple of days when I arrived, it was like we're surfing this slab and it was like eight foot perfect all day offshores, like two, four-hour sessions a day for like the first two days and then 
for the comp was kind of muddy when my heat was on and my second, my round three heat was good, but I just couldn't pull it all together. But, and yeah, I just went to a recast and a couple of days and the mate waves were amazing there. So yeah, it's been, it's been a very good experience coming here. I think I'll definitely come back. Mate, how are you finding the vibe uh, within the Rash Fest, mate, out in the water? Uh, it's pretty wild. Um, I'm not, like, I'm not a huge competitor. Like I was when I was young and I do a few little club pops here and there. I don't do states or anything. So, like, coming over here and more so, like, the cops are all right. Like, you know, like, fighting, like, fighting, battling for priority at the start, kind of a trip out. Um, but it's more so, like, the free surfs that you have between the event days. That's what kind of trips me out a little bit. Is like, in Western Australia, you're surf- I'm surfing with mainly surfers. Like, you know, there might be three boys, unless you're surfing waves. But, like, most other ways, you're mostly surfing with surfers. So, I know how to compete against surfers to get waves. Whereas I'm over here, I'm, you know, you win the water with 30 of the best bodyboarders in the world. And you're like, holy shit, this is pretty different, right? Uh, mate, uh, yeah. and who's, I mean, who, who's been a standout? I mean, there's, there's a, I mean, I'm just having a look at the, uh, like the current rankings chart. I mean, it hasn't been updated since Feb, but you know, mate, there's a lot, a lot of Moroccans floating around, um, you know, big, unfortunately not a lot of Aussies, but, um, no, but the Aussies that did compete, they showed up, they did, they did well. Like Josh and Kai surfed really well. Kai surfed his re- really well, his last day. And the Ebony Shell, she also did really well in the women. She definitely solidified her spot and like showed that she can toss it up with some of the world's best. Like she's definitely out there. If she can just commit, she'll, she'll do really well. How good is that? Um, but That's great. I'm, yeah, so sick, bro. It was frothing. Like, watching her surf and then watching her surf against some of the other girls, it was like, man, she's, like, up there with the best. Like, <laughs> she just needs to get a little bit of confidence under her belt. And then, yeah, but, man, to be honest, the Chilean locals over here have freaking shook me, bro. Like, they freaking rip. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, even, like, little grommies, they're just doing these, like, six-foot freaking back loops off, off nothing, like, this crazy i mean it's understandable though they've got punta dos punta uno and tendencia all the way in a kilometer and they're like world class ways to learn on so it's pretty it's pretty amazing to see i mean speaking of world class ways mate again you're, you're from the wild west over here in oz mate your your backyard's pretty pretty damn good as well can you give us a bit of a snapshot of what your 2024 has been so far i know uh, most recently, before you uh, jet set it across the other side of the world, uh, you teamed up with B Stone. Um, you got some yeah. waves over there. Yeah, yeah. So I guess 2024 started. I went to Hawaii and then came back. And then, yeah, when I came back, it was just kind of like grinding on a couple of swings of work before I came over here. And then on my breaks, Brad. That he's like starting to feel a little bit better and he was coming back over to West Oz. So I was like, sweet, we'll link up again because we hung out a little bit before that. And yeah, we went out and he's, he's ski on like a little four foot day at box and he got a couple of small ones and he was like, oh, it's a bit sore. And then we went back a week later and it was like six to seven foot pumping and he just paddled straight out and got a bomb straight away. <laughs> so but he's, an, he's a madman. But yeah, it was sick to, sick to link up a little ski session with him because I'd never really done that like savage channel myself on the ski while fellow fields it was a good experience and that was smack bang in the middle of the wsl event that was happening over at margs around the same time so for you guys to i guess like you, like you said obviously being a local there's that priority there but you know to to be able to kind of just find your spot in the lineup and still still get waves and still get like a lot of credibility out of what you guys did um i know uh whitey posted a clip um, through his kind of tension page recently that, you know, featured a lot more surfers than I was expecting to see. But in saying that, you you and Brad were the, the key standouts on the, on the bodyboard there, which is amazing. Thanks, man. Yeah, cheers. Um, yeah, it was, it was difficult, but we got it done weirdly. Like, we pulled up and then just, like, cruised around the scan channel for a bit, and then, like, Brad went out and straight away and got a sick one, and then got another one, got another one. We're on a three-wave rotation, and I went out, did the same thing. We both, I got, like, three sick ones, and then, like, just we did that, like, rotation again, and then it was, like, we kind of, like, didn't really get, 
many good ones. And then, like, I don't know, we thought it was going onshore, and then we went, so we went in, and then we went to a cow and we were watching the WSL. I was like, Brad, man, do offshore. He's like, nah, I'm like, dude, I'm watching live heat offshore. <laughs> I'm like, and I looked at Whitey's story, and crew was still getting blown out. And we were like, fuck, we should have hanged around, but it was all good. But yeah, like, as the lineup, like, it was, there was like 20 people out that day, and that for box, that's like unheard of. But it was definitely nice being able to paddle past all those pipe surfers and just go, hey, mate, out there to paddle past you. Well, because, you know, they do that when we're, when we're at, at pipe, all those local dudes paddle straight past. Definitely a nice feeling to be able to do that to them. <laughs> but, uh, it obviously means you've earned your stripes out there, mate. Uh, I think I still need to earn a few, but I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Touch base a little bit more on Hawaii. Yeah, give, give us a rundown of your trip. Really good trip this year compared to last year, at least. Um, you know, it was like, I was there for five weeks. Um, we got like multiple bright swells, multiple swells at a couple of other undisclosed locations, which was sick. A lot of local boys took us, took us to, um, that ended up being like a random little book jam that I weasel my way into, which was fun. It wasn't the best foolish to experience that like four guys in the water out of flight. Um, yeah, no. Yeah, it that's was really dream, season, man. I probably, yeah, I had, I had probably got some of the best ones I've got out of fight and back all this year. So I was stoked on that, and it was just a good trip in general. All the boys were charging that we were with, and everyone was having good times, and it was good to hang out with the local groms and that. They had, they'll stay at the house a bit, but yeah, it was good. Gotcha. And mate, what's uh, what's in store yeah. for? I mean. Wh- we're barely through the first first half of the year. What's uh, and you've done so much, mate. What what do you got planned for the back end? I mean, can we can we expect to see a second film project potentially release? Um, to be honest, I thought I was just going to have one project release, which was going to be a mix of Chile and of Hawaii. But um, with how Chile's going so far, I think I'm going to actually have to do it. Two separate. Sorry. <laughs> that's not, that, that sounds yeah. like a terrible problem, mate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it, it's going to be a terrible problem because my flip computer will probably blow up. The editing. <laughs> but it, nah, there's, there, there's a lot in the work. So it should be, should be, should be similar. Hopefully, good content yeah. coming out. So. Uh, any more yeah. kind of OS yeah. trips on, on the radar or obviously back, back to Oz, back to work I mean, and surf in between? Back to Oz, back to work. I got a lot of a lot of stuff I need to sort out when I get home. Um, there's a few things I need to, you know, money wise and family wise and stuff I need to do that I need to grind on for a few months. Um, I may I was talking to Brad maybe going over and just doing like a week, um, over the south coast with him. Um, go stay with him for a week. So that will probably happen sometime. And then I'd love to do go to the front line comp. Um, not necessarily even if just to do well on the comp, just to, again make a little free surf video out of it and if I do well on the comp that'd be sick but I mean that's yeah funds are going to be a bit detrimental so we'll see how we go yeah <laughs> for sure for sure yeah, I yeah. Tell you, and I tell you what mate again, yeah. like I said with, with with you and Brad pretty uh, dynamic duo like you know two absolute kind of big wave charges having you guys pair up and, and push each other it, uh, it can only lead to some pretty exciting things I think I uh, had a really good chat to Shano um the other day about it well just frothing thinking geez like these guys are going to get up to some crazy shit <laughs> yeah yeah i hope so man i sort of like when, when we first met like a few months ago we kind of just got along real well straight away we put on instagram and then that like, since then we've just been throwing ideas back and forth about like what we could do and all the rest of that and yeah hopefully i hope there's some interesting trips coming coming our way soon you know like we've got some stuff planned but we just need to get it going really yeah 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 uh yeah yeah mate and before we wrap this one up i'm just want to dig a little bit deeper obviously we're all big fans of um of the world tour over here uh, you know we we, we just we, we love seeing it progress we want to see it get bigger and better um but can't help to think that there seems to be all these kind of dead weights that keep pulling it down a lot of them the which are completely out of the control of the ibc uh obviously one of the most recent um yeah 
I, I don't even know how to start this conversation. It's a, it's a bit of a weird, like Yazdani, um, Castro, mate, like he, he put up a pretty, you know, pretty scary post on his, um, on, on his Instagram, yeah. obviously, uh, the IBC, um, put up a, a response post to that, um, sincerely apologizing again, mate. I don't, I don't know how, how things are going over there, mate, but can you, can you maybe give us, you know, what you know, your version. I'll give you the P. I'll give you the. I'll give you the PG rated version. Um, pretty much, what happened in that original here with uh, Augustine and that Danny guy. Um, Augustine's like one of the up and coming guys. He was like a favourite to win the event. Um, and seems to be a bit. Seems to me. Seems to be a bit of a common thing here, but um, guys. When you're trying to find priority at the start, guys can kind of seem to like purposely go on your inside or something, so you end up getting interference, which is what happened to me in my first seat, but yeah. I somehow got through with him. But pretty much that's what happened, and then Augustine got an interference, um, and then yeah, I don't think then once that Danny guy won it, he went in, and then I don't think Augustine's mate and all those guys were happy, and there was just a bit of a rah rah rah, and then it sort of continued, and then. Bit of an incident happened a couple of days days later at the event site, and um, yeah, it was kind of like outside the event, so it wasn't inside the event at all. Um, and the IBC did everything they could to keep it under control, as, as well as the locals. Um, but as for Danny's post, I mean, I don't really want to comment on that. Because I don't. I'm not sort of friends with him or fr- was a part of anything anything that happened. But I mean. Yeah, it was it was a gnarly situation, but I mean it's over now, and both parties just kind of parted ways. So I think it's onwards and upwards from here. Um, and uh, the IBC did deal with it best they could, and so did the security that are involved out the front. So um, I think that everyone's super passionate about bodyboarding over here, you know. So like they take it really to heart when shit like that happens. Yeah, and like I said, the, the post that uh, the IBC put out the statement regarding the incident, it, mate, it was, it was, you could tell that they would they would genuinely distressed about what had happened, and that you know this is something they're going to take pretty seriously. So, um, hopefully, you know, moving forward, whatever the repercussions are from this, this, you know, does set a precedence, um, and and can clean things up at the back end. Because again, the last thing what we want to see is any more, you know, disruption to what is a you know a, a building world tour exactly man exactly and i mean i know that the the top the top 16 riders had a meeting with the ibc the other day and they were talking about how like you know there's new management and the, within the ibc and pretty much there's only three people who are people who actually work for the ibc so like, it's only a three-man show and you know they're not really getting any money about minimal money out of it you know um of course they're kind of asking for help outside help as much as they can because they want it to run and be successful just as much as anyone else does you know um i think they're trying to go a foot in the right direction compared to last year which is good to see and i've noticed that thing at first hand um yeah so let's hope the best dave epic well once again mate thanks so much for your time really appreciate it i know we're uh on different time zones at the moment, but magically it, it, it kind of lined up. Um, but mate, yeah. It's, um, yeah, all the best for the rest of your trip and look forward to, yeah, chatting more in detail once you get back to Oz. Awesome, mate. It sounds epic. Cheers. Chat soon. Thanks, Pete, for having me. Cheers. Big ups to Tommy Morris. Um, that was an absolute pleasure having that conversation with him, getting the rundown of uh, what's going on over there in South America and, yeah, also what he's been up to um, so far this year and what's in store for the future. Obviously, a lot of uh, big video clips in the works. Um, yeah, so watch this space for the drop. What, uh, what's your take, Chris O? Oh, Tommy's up to a couple of really good things, him and, and, and Stoney, and getting the insights on the IBC as well. And I was talking to Benny separately about the first time I met uh, Tom was in the pool in Urban, uh, believe it or not. And uh, when you run into a bloke and he's got a, a function board with a limited edition stamp, you 
and he's on your stomping ground, you start to ask a few questions, and he he turns out he'd just signed a deal. I think the uh, the ink hadn't even dried yet with the uh, deal he'd done with 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 Shane and um, and Mark. So absolutely rips. It's great to see the content he's putting out. He, he's, he's shredding at the moment. So uh, you, I look you forward see, to seeing what's coming up. You out. seem to meet everyone of importance in the pool. It's kind of like the, the modern <clears throat> version of like a Greek spa, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't hang out there as much these days, so I'm sort of a, a bit of a... <laughs> bit, bit, bit of a, a loser. I don't actually meet many people these days. Uh, look, well, I guess one thing we we can comment on is, uh, yeah, it's not too far away. We're gonna sit where we're gonna see a couple of releases uh, of content from Tommy. Um, obviously, with this potty, we'll we'll put links up to his um, feature film Yin. Um, which captured a lot of footage ca- um, that he documented from his Hawaii trip. Uh, and he's uh, also shared a pretty cool little clip from one of the waves over in South America, which we'll post as well. But uh, moving on to our next special guest. And uh, for me personally, um, I'm in absolute awe of this guy, uh, a fellow podcastian, director, editor, <laughs> presenter and host of the Riptide uh, podcast, also committee member for the 2024 Shark Island Challenge, um, fellow young father of, of one, as soon to be two. Funnily enough, Chris, I tell you what, due date smack bang in the middle of the waiting period. Um, of course what, it is. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> could have planned it any better, but you know, just a, you know, a busy man runs his own business out of the Shire. Um, <laughs> well, he's, he's in the pool game, and all I can picture is Luke just standing around the side of a pool with a, you know, speedo on. Just say, I was going to say, <laughs> I, I've come to clean the pool. <laughs> you said it. You said it. Um, <laughs> so really good to just uh, get an insight. Uh, into all the hard work Luke and his team have been doing to get this Shark Island Challenge back off the ground. Mate, honestly, gives me goosebumps. Let's have a listen. Good to have you, mate. I know we've been holding off this chat for a very long time, but we finally got there. Oh, Benny, thanks so much for having me, man. Yeah, I really appreciate the kind words and um, stoked to be speaking about the upcoming six weeks. Um, it's shaping up to be a hell of an event. Yeah, oh, mate, I, I don't think I'm the only person that's going to say, we, look, I can't wait. Like it's, um, mate, it's exciting. But, um, before we get to that, mate, let's, let's touch base on you. How are you going? How's, how's family life? How's Lenny? I know your, your beautiful wife is, is due with baby number two in not so long. Oh, it's, yeah, it's definitely all happening. Um, it's been great. It's been really good to juggle a lot of different projects. Um, in and out of the border. Obviously, things get a little bit hectic from time to time, but yeah, Loz and Lenny have been um, a really cool supporting crew, as is like Sam Ben and Mark Sabbath from the committee, and, and just life's been good. Like, life's been busy, um, work in the shy has been good, Wave's been really fun. Um, got back for a recent trip down to the desert recently, which was just so good to kind of spread the wings and get back on the earth and highway again. And um, yeah, I, I, I really can't complain, you know, like it's it's just. Yeah, bodyboarding in the Shire when there's a real buzz about it and when one of the main international competitions of the world is coming back to home soil, like, yeah, you just get a couple of tingles. So we're so geared up and, um, yeah, stuff at home is really good, Benny. Thanks for asking. Mate, uh, give me a little bit of an insight to your, your recent trip uh, down in South Oz. Love to hear about it. Yeah, so it was, it was, a, it was a great trip. Went with a real um, good old friend, uh, Ryan Hutt, and met Woody Young and... Um, and Tobes over there, one of his good mates from Colbari, they, they drove over and they're, they're troopy. We did the old cheat code and flew in Adelaide, just hired a troopy. Uh, hired a troopy, I wish we hired a troopy. I hired a full drive and just cruised over to the bike from there. And yeah, had, had a great time. Really lucky. We missed all that rain on the east coast because a huge high was situated over Australia um, where a lot of the lows were kind of sitting on the east coast and, and you know, capturing the whole east and Sydney with rain we had just groundhog day every day just sunshine offshores light on shores in the arvo and just the beer was cold um how's the water also cold uh, yeah chilly man chilly and all the locals were saying it to um one of the first days out 
a lot of the more well-known waves down there. Um, a lot of the guys are wearing hoods and gloves and boobies and like, what the fuck's going on here? You know what I mean? Like South Oz, it can be known for its cold coast every now and again, but generally sitting up a little bit higher in latitude, it's, it's pretty sweet. But um, yeah, it was chilly. I think it's been between 11 to 12 degrees since December last year from this bizarre cold upwelling um, that's just been sitting there. So Frosty. Yeah, a little bit chilly. Yeah, frosty, man. But um, especially when East Coast lads like me, you know, I know you've got way bigger hairs on your chest, Benny, but step down in Victor, but mate, we are little pussy cats here in, in New South Wales. So took a little bit getting used to, but um, no, it was great. And just to be free and driving around and checking out, you know, setups and just sleeping under the stars with the swag. You know, I did wake up a couple of times forgetting to the do the roof of the swag up, um, freezing and, and snoring my head off. But other than that, it was, yeah, it was a, it was a great trip. And it's going to leave the city because Sydney's great, but it's also a melting pot of just craziness. So, um, yeah, great to get away and I'd do it again in a heartbeat. And uh, how was Moody performing? Still in his element? Oh, mate, he is. He was a, he was a trucker in, in, in another life, eh? He oh, just absolutely. It's unbelievable, mate. Like, you just set him a destination and he'll just get you there, hurry along, you know. Oh, he, he, he has got a BA troop in now, so he can put his foot to the floor. But, like, he's just, um, he's one of those calculated, logical, real switched on individuals that you want on every trip because, you know, you go back to the Wild Hog days when he was traveling with Grizz and, um, uh, like, Novi and, 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 and anyone that would, like, Hop on those trips. Uh, he was just the the linchpin, so to speak, and he, he he made it happen. And the same and same in the dead. Like he's like, yeah, go here, do this, pump up your tires here, let these down, do that. It's just like, yeah, you're almost with a tour guide. It's 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 it's, it's just incredible. He's just a good mate too. He's just a good fella. He's down to earth, and we all know how well he body books. Like he's yeah. just, some of the lines he's pulling out there, and just yeah, didn't even plug his board the whole trip. He was just. He was leafless <laughs> the entire trip, man. And I'm just like getting flogged on the inside. My leash is stretching out to a surfboard leash length. And he's just cruising around, picking the eyes out of it. And, yeah, and then um, popping through the back. No scratches. Yeah, he's popping through the back. I know. And I'm like, mate, like there's been three people beached up on the cliff in the last hour with their board <laughs> snap. Um, and then you're just somehow making it ass around. Like, what's going on? Different, different water down there in Kalbara. Tell me that. Mate, if uh, you know, if you had to stamp your passport for every domestic surf trip you, you did, I tell you what, Moot, Moot would have gone through a few, I reckon. Oh man, and the and the time frame thing which he did to me, like he, you know, for example, man, on the Friday when we were looking to leave, um, me and Huddy pushed our flight back a little bit and tried to get some waves on Saturday morning. He needed to be home. I think Tobes needed to be home for some reason. He was like, "Sweet, finished up our beers at the roadhouse at like." Four p.m. on a Friday afternoon, maybe five. Had some burgers, Kathy and Mark were there. It was a good time. Um, and then he just hit the highway. And you know what he did, Benny? He drove, and he drove, and he drove twenty-four hours straight home to Kalbara. Wow, <laughs> that's yeah, insane. That's insane. Yeah, it, it, it's insane, man. Like he lives on Conroe Island now. So I'm just going back. Um, Calbara is his, is his hometown of, of origin, but man, like it, he just was, he's just a highway hog. He doesn't give a fuck. It's unbelievable. And for someone not to fall asleep during that period, like I'm like, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, mate. Yeah, big, uh, big ups to Mort. Big ups. Oh, they don't make him like him anymore. I no, no, like him. no, that's not. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> mate, let's, uh, let's get back on topic and talk about the main reason why we're catching up for this chat um let's talk about the sick the shark island challenge mate i mean it's back it's looking amazing the lead up to this thing has been spectacular i haven't seen this much excitement for any event in a very very long time mate can you give us a bit of an insight um i guess into the the initial concept how did the idea come about um, you know, who did you sit around with and, and chat about it with over a couple of beers, you know, for get, to get to this point? I think it probably originated, uh, and thank you for the kind words, Benny, we're, we're, we're so it's 
trend and it's good to see it's capturing the attention of a lot of people. Um, but we've probably had this conversation, I'd say, early to mid last year, maybe like February, March, um, it kind of came about. And it was obviously because of the, uh, the, the huge hiatus that, you know, during the period the comp had to run, um, we've also had COVID in the mix. Um, we, and it's just a couple of things like, you know, certain factors around, um, the sales of shots, it hadn't been kind of playing towards, uh, a comp being run. And, you know, for whatever reason, it's not any factor to come into it. But Sadler, m- like Mark Sadler, um, who's head of the committee and had, uh, run his own landscaping business, surf the island, it's his whole life, absolute legend of Bella. He's, he's the kind of go getter and the entrepreneurial face of the competition. And he just kind of said, what are we doing? Like, let, let's have a go. And he also works, um, with Michael Osler, um, yep. who, who started his term, does a fair bit of landscape work and they banter back and forth at uh, work a lot. I also do a little bit of work with his, 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 his company, Sean Cooper, who's recently, um, with his just weights and, and a fair few other crew have started Cold Coast Bodyboarding Club. We're always talking and kind of banter back and forth. And I think it was just said that, like, what are we doing? Why aren't we doing this? Let's do it. And the wheels got kind of put in motion. There was a little bit of apprehension at the start. Obviously going like, where do we start? How do we get insurances? How do we register a club? How do we, how do we get money? How do we, you know, get a council application in? How do we connect all the dots? And over a period of time, um, it's, it, it's just happened. And we've had some really good people reach out along the way and really help us out. Like, huge shout out to Toby at, um, Bodyboard Kingdom, like coming on as naming sponsor and putting his face. In, in us three um, to kind of get it done. Like, you know, there was, there was big shoes to fill from, from 40 and Alex Leon in previous years. So a um, little bit of pressure, but Tobes came in and, and sorted us out. And then obviously um, Hub Boards, Innovative Home Loads and Handpicked as the, the silver sponsors um, also really contributed hugely. And just the individual athlete sponsors, like so many companies um, locally and abroad came on board and just allowed us to put on uh, well, it obviously hasn't run yet, but to, to, to organize and to, um, get, you know, all our ducks in a row to hopefully put on a, a stellar comp. But, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it, 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 it all happened over a couple of cheese and maker rolls and coffees in the morning, Moco, and then it's just, um, eventuated to now. Yeah. I mean, the, the individual sponsors that you were, you're talking about, I think that's something that, you know, bodyboarding hasn't seen in event, uh, and I think it's something that's been missing. So, um, yeah, you guys have done a spectacular job at kind of making that work, um, and yeah, hopefully, it kind of becomes a base platform for any any kind of major events moving forward. Because yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great opportunity to not only generate brand more brand awareness at the events, but also to to help help get more more people into the events themselves, which is great. Oh, mate, for sure. And it really made up most of that prize pool yep. um, for the athlete. So, you know, you, you kind of allowed that the 10K first prize is obviously going to draw a lot of people in, and, and that's a substantial amount of money, uh, we feel, anyway, for for taking out the event. Um, you know, you've got to serve three heats, but there'll be every, some risk there if you have the 10T life. But, you know what I mean? Like, that kind of gives us... Um, yeah, that ability just to branch out and be more financially viable when it when it comes to putting on a comp because we don't want to just stick up a two three by man three by three tent you know on on the top of the point and have a hooter and and a PA system. It's, 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 it's got to be legit. And when you know we're talking off air before looking at all the IBC um, setups and 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 all the different uh, scaffoldings and and even the New South Wales, Surfing Australia, WSL, you need to look professional, brand yourself properly and um just come across as a professional outlet um that you that you want to be and you're, and you're striving to be so yeah we're so stoked mate and what obviously talking about infrastructure and, and i guess all the processes that goes into to making those things happen have you had any kind of speed humps or hurdles in, in terms of i guess forming relationships with 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 shy with government um, you know, with the local community in, in making this all come to a head? Um, not so many roadblocks, definitely little bumps along the road. Um, we've never halted completely in our progress, but there were things 
that did take a lot longer than we first anticipated. Um, and it was more so just meeting and networking with the right people in the right positions. Like the old saying, it's not um, what you know, it's, it's who you know. So partnering up with um, Southern Shire Surfing, um, Southern Shire Surfing Committee, that was that that was the first kind of um, starting point in the in, in, in our journey because uh, that then led us on to Surf New South Wales, which um, we were going to originally we were going to go to Surf in Australia, but Surf New South Wales um, has, has has taken on that 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 role of um, you know helping us organise a board rider um, club, um, essentially like a bodyboarding club, and then within that uh, their insurances and their um, indemnity, you know cover up the the event so i mean it, it was it was just making sure that we we found the right pathways you know obviously with some some local help and and with the event application council they've been really helpful um uh, the delphic from the southern Shire lifeguard committee um and head of operations there he's been great with our water safety plan um and luke madden huge charge of luke madden surface of arts which is net he's now at surf in australia um with the promotion recently in the last year but he has just been incredible and has been a go-to man when it when it's when it's been the um fine print admin kind of side thing mate it sounds like you have most of your ducks in a row which is yeah mate i guess all everyone can hope for now is that this event window period um pays dividends and we we get ultimate island conditions oh man we are just crossing all fingers and toes and, and testicles and ovaries mate like it is <laughs> one of those ones that's like you know what i mean like it's, you can put all this hard work in and you can be ready to go ready to hit the button um but if huey doesn't come to the party then uh yeah you've kind of got to look at other options we haven't discussed that yet the first week of the waiting period isn't looking amazing as such. Um, there has been a little bit of divergence in the models. Um, there is a low hitting up this weekend um, for Sunday, Monday that looks like pretty prime mild. Unfortunately, it's about five days before the waiting period does start. So, Ooh, you know, out. I know. No, no, well, I guess I guess all that can do though is, I mean, if if that's well pans out, that just gives everyone that's already landed here in Oz and I guess a number of the local guys that are already floating around little bit more time in the salt to to get acquainted with with that setup yeah definitely man we've got Tanner and mike over here at the moment um and it's surfed it now for the first time not in the most ideal conditions we've got a good feel for it we know how much experience mike's had out here jake romero is going to be here really too flying in um a lot of the local contestants who you know jack baker anthony miller benny sawyer they're just stalwarts out there man they you know that wave doesn't break without them being out there so yeah there's there's been a lot of good hype around it, um, but you've just got to, oh, you just got to pray for, for, for this one. It's really hard to predict, Benny, because I don't know um, if you guys have experienced them down in Bico, but there's been so many variable patterns happening with weather systems lately that aren't seasonal, and it's almost like you can't, you know, it seemed like 10 years ago you could almost predict changes, like the race to get that big southerly bluff that comes up the coast and would almost signal you know, the change to late autumn into winter and, and there'd be certain times throughout the year that certain swells would hit. And I'm sure if you went back to the data and looked at the swell net and talked to Greg Brockenshire or anything like that, like uh, one of the is there, he, he could identify trends, but it's very up and down in our eyes. So it's just like checking the charts every day, making sure, you know, we're going to get that 10-day kind of call out going into a seven-day um yellow alert or like orange alert and then um going into a three-day green alert and again i guess the, the benefit like like you said is you, you've got it's almost what five weeks or six weeks for the waiting period 24th of may through to 30th of june with an extension that can be granted i think yeah 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 100 you're spot on so yeah it's about five and a half six weeks um with two weeks added on in um july if well, obviously you know logistically and um and i guess cost wise and 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 also just athlete wise it would be great if it ran a little bit earlier um within that with that designated waiting period but either way if we get a swell within that six eight weeks we'll be running on that swell yeah oh mate i yeah 
like I said, fingers crossed. And yeah, there's a lot. If you had to count all the fingers that are crossed in the bodyboarding community to uh, to to make this work, mate, it'd be yeah, it'd be phenomenal, um, mate. Let's let's get right down to I guess the you know the the field of superstars. Um, let's start off with the the Rippy online trials, and then again the the concept of of that, and um, I guess the success of of what it's led to with with who's going in and 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 whatnot. Yeah, um, yeah, like. No. Thanks, man. That, that's, that's been a that's been a good addition. I feel to allow um, some good online hype. Uh, it definitely creates a um, an online atmosphere that allows people to participate in it without having to be there at the event on the day. And you know, I was I was asked actually in a Dougie Smith podcast yet to release on the Riptide Potty in the coming weeks. Um, he actually asked me like, why aren't you doing a day for the trials physically, like, you know, back where it was held at the point or the patch or, you know, what, what, whatever they get their hands on. And unfortunately, there's 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 a, there's a couple of things at play there that, you know, obviously we, we'd like to have a day out and we, we'd, in, we'd love to get people down there and, and um and you know, just just have another great day of, of doing competition. But, like, when it comes down to the ability for everyone to make it, comes down to the waves that are on offer, you know, especially the point. When I've seen the point trials in recent years or like in past decades, and you look at the waves that are on offer for the riders that potentially could be pushed into the comp, not saying that a small tech wave rider couldn't um, make their presence felt in the comp, because if you look at the Sunny Coast recipe of like some of the best big wave boots that we've, we've seen through kind of like, you know, Jake Stone, Michael Noby, um, Tom Roberts in there, John and Bruce, like they can they can take that tech and put it all the way to the big wave stuff. But it was just kind of like, why run it in four foot mush burgers to then send them out into eight to ten foot kegging slabs? You, you know, it was kind of like let's put it online, let's make sure there is some buzz around it. Let's, let's give them three months, put some new waves out there, and um, you know, let's see what happens. And, and as as we saw, like you know, there was I think there were fourteen or 15 entries in, in total. I might be wrong. I've still got the confirmation of Elliot Williams and Riptide, but um, you know some of the clips that came through, like mate, mind mind blowing, yeah. mind blowing. Yeah, I was so into it. Like from from like the get go, we had um, Lucas come on. Um, he dropped a, a really good clip from from like the early days and and, and put his kind of heart this sleeve out there because I think a lot of people were trying to hold back as a strategic plan to get a bit more bang for buck closer to the decision day, which also, you know, you've got to play your cards close to your chest. But, um, yeah, like, you know, Jesse Handrager, Shaden Schrader, Charles Ward, um, yeah, had Merlin Moon in there, um, you know, Chase and Leary threw, threw a couple of clips together. Um, yeah, and then in, in, in the end with our, our, our winners, Sam Thomas and, and <laughs> Adam Kedzbar, man, like it was, it was so fitting. And the reason I'm, I'm smiling and laughing about Kezzy, I just think back to his clip with him riding that horse away in the distance <laughs> in the last bit of it. And it's just like, what a, what, what a, what a character that bloke is. And all, all, all that he stands on it too. Like it's an it's incredible tune in his own ride and just him, um, him, him, him showing recently the last two or three years, he is one of the best big wave dudes going around in Australia and can, Red some barrels like some of the barrels he's made at Chippies recently should not have been made, but he's made. It. He's made. Sam, yeah, Sam is definitely pushing the boundaries, and and I mean, credit to him to have a wave like Chippies as your your training ground. I mean, that wave's not for, for everyone, if barely anyone. Um, so to constantly have the ability and the uh, the ball sack of courage to to push yourself in a wave like that is. Um, I mean, it's Jesus. What the sport needed, isn't it? <laughs> oh, for sure, man. He's a nice fella. He's down to earth. It's great to have his um, brother Cohen, uh, Thomas, in the comp too, and just um, yeah, just just kind of making sure that lineup that we had. Obviously, you know, you, you, you've got to have your, your great and big names in there. But making sure um, with a concerted effort that you. Know, trying to split up the field and not have too many oldies or too many youngies um, when it comes to the age bracket. Because, you know, we did cover a little bit of flack in relation to um, having to see a lot of the announcements at the start when we were, we were dropping the athletes were um, 
I guess when you refer to athletes, more elderly gentlemen, because they are like in the, you know, kind of the 30s, some of them in their 40s and whatnot. Um, that was also by design because we wanted to have the most prestigious, legendary, well-performed bodyboarders in the comp. But we also, one of our ethos at the start, coming together to committee with um, Mark, Sam Ben and myself, was to make sure that there was young blood in there. And if you look at the field now, I haven't crunched numbers um, exactly, but I'm pretty sure it's 50-50 for under 30s and over 30. Right. Um, and we kind of felt like that was a really good fit when it came to making sure that... Um, just that, you know, there's been a bit of conjecture in the bodyboarding industry uh, in my eyes over the last couple of years in regards to possibly uh, older generations still being heralded, heralded as, as the as the top dog. As, as the statesman, yeah. And, and, yeah, and they serve so well and they, you know, the videos we've all watched time and time again, back and forward, the tensions, the no friends, the, just the... Yeah, the Waldens brothers, Thurston's brothers, they all put, all put these guys in their, in, in their movies and they all shone so brightly. But you do look at the next generation coming up and there is some incredible bodyboarders in there in, in there also. And we just wanted to make sure that we weren't leaving them behind and they were noted as um, as as proper stars of the bodyboarding world. Well, I tell you, mate, there, there's one name here that I've been paying really close attention to through bodyboarding. Um, the last six months, and that is Anthony Miller. Oh, mate, hats off to Anthony Miller. He was actually one of our first Groms and Dez from Emerald um, approached us, and he was very keen to have Anthony in the comp just because he's obviously been um, sharing the lineup with him a lot recently. He comes over from the eastern suburbs on a regular basis to Carola. Um, pretty much feels like he's a local here now, and he, for his age, he did just. He is putting it to the sword, eh? But we need to be clear, he is a Grom. He is not a, a statesman, but by no means should he be ignored. Um, I mean, he's I'm just saying. been... Anything he puts his name to at the moment, he's just he's just winning. He really is, man. And when it comes to... I did a wave pool session with him down in Melbourne for that NMB uh, wave pool day back in Feb last year. Yep. Um, we got offshore positions all day, had an absolute ball. I was so stoked. And he was just really impressing me. Like, obviously, a mate, you got Winnie and Ben there. So, like, you know, you've got some really good bodyboarders going ham. But um, he just has, one, he has great humility. Two, he has a great attitude. Three, he's got his head on his shoulders. And four, he's got an unbelievable desire to succeed. And he's got a in five, he's got a skill set that for a young girl of his age, he's not rarely seen, you know what I mean? So it's, there's, a, there's a recipe there that's just simmering up into existence, which could, as you're alluding to, you know, make a big statement in this year's challenge. But again, he, he's one of a pretty incredible field. And I mean, I'm not even going to run through this whole list, but I mean, you're looking at the statesman side of things. We've got, we've got Mike, we've got hub we got jerry we got plc um winnie as a statesman um you know some of the other aussie counterparts jace finlay louis finnegan i feel like i'm running through the whole list here to- tobes in it um but you know then we got that that kind of mid-range age generation liam lucas marley's on harley ward obviously sam thomas cohen thomas um and then yeah i, I was like Look, just count the world titles alone on that list. It's it, it's mind blowing. Oh, <laughs> it, it, it is mind blowing, and we've been so stoked with those fellas just accepting the invitation and seeing it for what it's worth. And and yeah, like it's it, it's allowed us to create a lot of hype for the comp. And um, we just really we really appreciate their their commitment to it. You know, because there's obviously the IBC going on. Um, everyone's got so many things going on in their lives. Australia is a long way away from everywhere. So it's a commitment to come here and a lot of visas, a lot of a lot of um sponsorship packages, a lot of, you know, people putting them up in their their, their place locally here. So yeah, it's it's a it's a huge commitment and it's great to see um when like the bell was was rung, every everyone answered. So yeah, we're so open. Mate, and tell me again that the picking picking order here must have been incredibly tough for you guys. Um because 
And again, there's been lots of comments up on social socials, you know, asking questions, you know, of, of where are other people. Um, but how tough was that for you guys? And were there, you know, are there any names in particular that you you kind of like? Geez, we wish we could have, you know, fit them in, but they're just, you know, for whatever reason, they didn't make the cut. No, oh, fuck, mate. Where's Damien King when you need him? We should join him in on this ball, Benny. <laughs> Ready to get him in, mate. I'm sure he's players better than me. But yeah, obviously everyone would know Damo. Um, King has won the comp. He's arguably won it. He's probably one of the best editions of the comp. Yeah, and, and won um, with the Hallmark of Bands. It stands alone as, as one of the greatest bodyboarding achievements um, known to sport. But with King, um, and we're, we're really hoping to have him down on the day. We've invited him onto the media boat um, to sing piss with the with the boys and his wife, and just and ha- have a great day of it. You know, and and in, in in saying that too, there is still a chance he could possibly be in the comp because of um, different reserves being shuffled around and people's um, availability and whatnot. But I, I guess with King, it was it was more so. Um, He's away, I believe, for two weeks of the waiting period. He's going away on a, on, a, on a surf trip somewhere. And also with the commitment factor to the younger generation uh, and knowing that we only had so many spots to hand out to the statesmen, as, as you were referring to before, it just it, it just wasn't gelling at the time. Uh, we've spoken to Kingy on and off, like, you know, after the whole social media event. He's been all in good spirits and it's, it's all been sweet. And I think he was also playing up to the lot online which we were like loving loving too and that video he produced like when you guys mentioned on the body with him looking ripped and shredded um you know admired his uh previous winner's trophy and just kind of reminded one of the accolades in which he's achieved i i had to fucking repost and just laugh myself it was it was too good he's the true king of comedy and and self-promotion so oh mate there's a there's a reason they call him the joker oh 100 percent so it's not aptly named he's 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 off the charts, but and there was obviously heaps of other crew too. That you know, like you look at Benny Player, you look at Mitch Rawlins, you look at Ryan Hardy, um, you look at Samiga was thrown out there a lot. Again, uh, more kind of older statesmen, but you know, all worthy of having their spot in the challenge. And you know, in years to come, could have other spots in the challenge. So um, yeah, it, it, it was always tough. Twenty five spots is super hard to fill. Um, and there's also a lot of stuff behind the scenes, I guess, that people don't really get to see when it comes to contractual agreements with sponsors and their, I guess, yeah, their, 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 uh, how do I put the word, um, what, what they get out of their contract, so to speak. And of course. And some riders have already promised, promised traditions, you know what I mean? Because obviously if the, of the sponsor dollars that were handed over and, and we left that up to the sponsors to come back with their, um, their, their, their list and ideas and, and, and we, we kind of spoke about it and, and went from there and the puzzle slowly um, was kind of solved but yeah it's, it's always good conjecture online and, and we loved it and we hopefully have those ones that were left out this year um, in next year's challenge mate I'm getting goosebumps honestly getting goosebumps just just to see this this field of of absolute stardom in, in in hopefully what turns out to be one of the, the greatest and heaviest competitive waves in the world um, is is going to be amazing. Mate, um, when all things pan out and, you know, we get the green light for the event, um, it's up and running. Obviously, not everyone around the world can get to the uh, beautiful uh, Shire um, to watch this thing with their, their own two eyes. Like, where where can everyone watch the event? Good, yeah, great question, man. Um, you know, it's unfortunate if someone can't visit Hopperton down here in, in, in the show and get inundated with our um, inner circle, so to speak. But if they can't make it down, um, the best place would be, we've got Innovative Productions coming on board and they're um, producing a... Promised um, WSL style uh, broadcast where we'll have our commentators Terry McKenna, um, Michael Chris, and Alex Leon. They will be locked off on one camera because this will be rotating through two commentators at once. We'll have another camera on um, the point, and we'll have another one um, further up in the judges' tower. We'll also have um, 
yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have a number of eyes through drones um, and various photographers on the day. Sam Ben heading up media um, and production there for, for the day. He, he's very well, um, very well, you know, kind of schooled in, in, in that sort of stuff. So that will all be taken care of. Um, and that will be fed through Sporting News YouTube, which has, um, I believe, 130,000 subscribers at the moment. And on Facebook, they've got over 500,000 followers. And we thought that was the best platform to launch the uh, comp through, just because of the already great following that they that they have. Um, Trent from Sporting News has been very helpful throughout the whole process of just sorting out uh, the back end of, of things when it came to the filming and producing and, and, and marketing the whole event. And, um, yeah, he, he's been keen from day one and he'll also be doing the post event video and, um, highlight reel and looking to get that out within 24 to 36 hours. It's been no pressure trend, no pressure at all, sir, <laughs> but I can't wait to wake up with a filthy, dirty hangover the next day after the after party at Journal Records Club. Everyone's welcome to come, obviously. Um, great, great organization out there and a great venue. And hope to see some some ridiculous waves and some big bales and big airs, Trent. A little uh, little hangover pick me up. Oh, far out. It's gonna be a, be a rough one the next day, but um yeah, I'm, I'm almost <laughs> like you could think of just a band Benny is you put in the hard yards and, and Mark and myself obviously have been putting a fair bit of time in behind closed doors. We can't wait to let loose from the uh, the after party. So if anyone's around the Shire after the uh, the event, head out to Colonel Records Club, get yourself a taxi out there in Uber and um, plan to stay the night. Mate, hard work always deserves reward. Thank you. Yeah, just, it does. It does. And um, yeah, as long as we get this well, I feel it'll be realised. Mate, I'm going to finish this chat off with one final little question. Mate, there's a few rumours circulating that you may or may not be able to bet on the Shark Island Challenge. What do you know about this? Uh, look, it's definitely, yeah, it hasn't been fully confirmed yet. So it's something that still stand me up in the air. We do have a really good contact um, at Palmer Bear that we may be able to get a market up. It's just more so ironing out some finer details. But look, I'm a betting man, Betty. I love having a bet with GG. Like, I enjoy the horses too much. You know, I've had to put myself limit weekly just to make sure I've kept my family afloat here in Sydney, hustle bustle, cost of living Sydney. And um, you know, I'd love to see a market. I'd love to see a market up for the challenge. So who who would who would set who would set the market for the event? Who would, you know, pl- you know, lock in those odds? Who would you know, you you've obviously got to have someone that's close to the event that that creates them. I know, mate, and that's some of the finer details too. Because I guess as a bookmaker, they was we wanting to know where, how, and what um, athletes were 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 going to produce on the day. You know what I mean? And you know, with, with background and history and wave conditions, and you know, if it's if it's, if it's a six foot, really nice groomed on day with you know still heavy waves with bowls and barrels, it might and certain body borders, but then you've got you know, the hopeful eight to ten foot swell that we're gonna get and you know, you're gonna see those kind of big wave body waters come more and more into it, I feel. So I don't know who's gonna set it. I definitely happily get behind um get behind a bookmaker and whisper a couple of sweet nothings into his ear just to get some I mean, as a, as a committee man, mate, I feel like you wouldn't be allowed to place a bet. No, I know. But you know, there are ways. There are other ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Came, offshore came in by bank accounts. <laughs> Exactly, mate. You can you can always just you just pass the cash three or four sets of hands down, and then you're clean, mate. You're clean. Hundred percent. You're not having any investigation here, mate. I'm, I'm long gone in business my weddings when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> mate, you're a one way one way flight to Mexico. <laughs> oh, for sure, and hopefully, you know, I would bring up a tragedy, but I come back. You know what I mean? We've looked at how, how that place has been trending lately, but you only have to go over there. Yeah. How was that, Kate? Hey, that was in- Yeah, I, I mate, just, just before I called you, I actually spoke to a, a really good friend that lives over in Scarborough. Obviously, you know, two of those guys were, were you know, born and bred Perthians. And, uh, mate, it, it it's not sitting well with the surfing community over there, that's for sure. 
Well, oh, mate, how could it? You know, and and hopefully it is that if I had those one-off tragedies that that doesn't become a reoccurrence. But I mean, like Mecca has always been known to be a very dangerous place. Just when you hear that and the, the manner in which it was done, you just realise the severity of it. You know, but yeah. Now, like as a parent myself, you've been a parent. Like, could you imagine getting that call? And no, I, I, I can't. I can't swallow that that concept at all mate like mate i i i get upset when you know my my kids fall over and scrape their knees like it it hurts or not yeah 100 you hate seeing them in pain and then you can imagine what those fellas went through so yeah um shout out to that whole community eh? and even on the east coast here it rocked all of us my my brother actually spent 18 months in mexico traveling around with his his now wife um you know, just in full drives and staying the backpack and doing this and that, you could just could have easily been him. So, yeah, definitely his own. Mm. All right, mate. Well, let's wrap things up. Uh, once again, mate, thank you so much for your time. I know how busy you are, obviously, leading up to uh, the starting point for this waiting period. Um, so on behalf of myself and the entire team at the closeout, mate, um, Lots of love, and we wish you all the best for a very, very successful event. Oh, man, thank you so much, Benny. And huge shout out to the closeout potties. The stats, as I said, the off there, man. It's one of the my more favorite potties. Um, when I'm deep in the concrete pool shell with uh, no sun and covered in African chlorine, you guys are the go-to to have a couple of laughs and enjoy the bodyboarding content that's, that's, that's happening out there in the world. And you guys are covering it really well. So um, I enjoy it. I hope you look better. Forward to enjoying a fair few uh, more episodes in the future, sir. Mate, we're just trying to follow your lead, buddy. No, oh, mate, <laughs> you guys are doing it in a nice way. I, I like the three. You can bounce off each other, you know, and you've got like different little inside jokes, and, and you guys sound like you have a good time off air, too. So I'm, I'm into it. A very good time off air, mate. A very good time off air. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Oh, I can't wait to hear about it. Well, uh, thanks again, mate, and uh, we look forward to having another wrap-up conversation post uh, Shark Island Challenge 2024. Oh, me too, Benny. Cheers again for the chat. Mate, another great conversation with a great man, Lukey O'Connor. Can't thank you enough, mate. Um, Also can't wait to link up with you again post Shark Island Challenge 2024 for a full debrief. Uh, Hopefully we can sit down with the uh, crown champion and maybe uh, Elliot Williams from Rippy as well to get the full spread. Watto, mate, what's your take on the event? I mean... More world titles than you can wave a stick at. I think just in that field of competitors alone, there's 16 world titles. Mike's got eight. Tanner, one. Hub, three. Jerry, two. PLC, two. And then, mate, you've just got a plethora of champions on top of that. I was just going to make mention, we've got a lot of world titles, but there's a lot of of, uh, people in there with some... um, Big kahunas for big waves. There's, uh, like, you look at the trials clips, holy heck, like, that was out of control. Well, that's it, mate. Again, you you've got, we, again, you've got you've got the Tassie boys, right? You've you've got oh, Col- Cohen and Sam Thomas. Uh, you've got um, Harley Ward. So, not that Shark Island and um, Shippies are, are the same wave, but... I mean, you've got to admit that there's similarities. So I think those guys are going to sit pretty comfortably in in the event if the waves do turn on. On top of that, mate, you've got, you know, a bunch of absolute hellmen from the East Coast, like from legend status and kind of still current, that are going to, you know, hold their ground. You've got Jace Finlay. You've got Lester. <laughs> You got Mickey Osler. I mean, Lily Pollard's in the event. She's no stranger to the island. Um, Sean Pine, um, Winnie knows how to dance at at, at, at the island. Uh, and then you got Liam Lucas, Benny Sawyer, um, Anthony Miller, who, for some strange reason, man, this kid. What, what's Miller? Sixteen years old, mate. Yeah, he's I, I feel, super young. I feel like his name's been in the limelight for years now. He's just everything he touches turns to gold. The lineup's sick. Like I can't wait for it. I can't wait to watch it. Like it, it it's going to be pretty nuts. And I just hope they get waves. I I hope it's absolutely cooking 
island. Like, I just want it to be big, heavy. Hey, 2000, and again, if we can just recap 2001 Shark Island Challenge, Jace Hazel, airdrop, get it done. Yes. Yes. <laughs> What's your take? I know we've, 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 we've touched on it briefly a little bit before, but, you know, looks like the rumours are a little bit more than rumours that there could be some uh, online betting opportunities for this event. Mate, if you were a betting man, and I know you're not, um, who would your, <laughs> who would your um, you know, guarantee, who, who would get the best odds and who would be your dark horse? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, my dark horse would be Lester. Yep. What are his odds? What are Lester's odds? I don't know. I don't. I don't even understand the whole betting thing. But <laughs> just I'll, say I'll a, throw a ten or say, yeah. Say, say a <laughs> say a bunch of numbers, and yeah, people will think you know what you're talking about. Twenty-seven to five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seven, four, three, six, two, or something like that. Yeah. And um, I tell you what. Oh, still, those clips blow me away. Sammy Thomas, come on! Like that's that's who that's who I'm cheering for. I want to see him do well. Um, yeah, I'm pretty keen to see him go and have a red hot crack. But oh, mate, I'm super excited by it. Like it's it's just going to be sick. So are they live streaming it? Did you? Yeah, mate. They you? they are. So um, the the essentially. Honest. Yeah, they've partnered with a production no. company, so it's I, I I actually think this thing is going to be pretty spectacular. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Multiple angles. Um, yeah, really, really good kind of production um, kind of design. It's going to be sick. So I've got to ask you, Ben, how many bodyboarders are going to work the day that that gets called on? <laughs> There's not going to be much the, uh, <laughs> mate, the, the, uh, mate, I tell you what, the... <laughs> There's going to be a traffic jam on the Harbour Bridge and the Harbour Tunnel, mate, as everyone from the northern beaches tries to jet stream down to uh, the Shire to just sit on the headland and watch this thing. I mean, this I'm not saying this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, but, mate, it's been a long time between drinks for an event of this status. Yes, it's not part of the world tour, but who gives a shit? Um, mate, this oh. is one of the most star-studded lineups. I think anyone has seen in a bodyboarding contest in a very, very long time. Oh, for sure. For sure. Nah, I'm stoked. I'm, I'm really pumped for it. So, can't wait. Yeah, mate. And once again, yeah, big shout out to Lukey and all the uh, event um, committee and also um, the team at Rippy for kind of working hand in hand and getting this thing up and running. Um I feel like all the hard work's done for for them right now. It, it's all about putting their um, faith in Mother Nature and the elements and, uh, yeah, getting it across the line. So I can't wait to see this thing unfold and explode on a, uh, a very, very shallow reef. But moving on, mate, last but far from not least, but still in context to the Shark Island challenge had a great opportunity to yeah touch base with sammy thomas uh who again is a confirmed competitor for the shark island challenge event pretty interesting story how he locked in his spot which um i'll let him tell you how it all went down but a uh, little bit of a uh, comical genius i guess in the end yeah mate so let's get into it thanks for joining us sam thomas on another fantastic episode of the closeout bodyboarding podcast how are you buddy i'm good mate how are you mate i'm really good really good i've uh once again escaped the the wife and kids snuck down to my office to uh throw the headset on and have another fun conversation perfect mate sounds good mate um What's been going on? Where are you at the moment? Whisper, whisper, uh, tell me you're in South Oz. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just floating around here with um, my brother, Cohen, good mate from Tassie, uh, Dean Watkins, and we've got a little bloke from Albany, uh, Aaron Middleweek. He's come out to um, film a few of our waves. Nice. Nice. How, how long are you, are you sticking around in the desert? Uh, we've got another couple of weeks, but we've, we've had about a month, so Oh, like a couple of weeks so far, so it'll be like a month in total we spent out here. Nice. And how have the have the ways been on? 
Yeah, yeah. We, we got a couple of fun days at the start of the trip and then uh, a few smaller days where we're just kind of floating around and uh, drinking a few beers. And But yeah, the last couple of days have been really fun. It looks like, um, yeah, it should be pretty good for the next couple of weeks. So um, yeah, it should be good. Yeah, happy days. Mate, that, uh, I guess that'll be a, a good lead up to uh, the big event that's coming up. Yeah, it's actually, I was talking about it with Colin today because he's like also in the comp and, you know, it's actually a good place to be before, you know, leading up to the event because, you know, you, you get, you're surfing pretty much every day and the way it's like, you know, of somewhat consequence. So, it's um, yeah, it's a good good place to sort of get your muscle memory in tune, hopefully before the comp because I know if I was in Paddy, you know, you might get the odd like shippy swell, but in between that, you're off, off, often just surfing you know, pretty weak, cold beaches and you, you're sort of all frozen and stiff. And so, no, it's good to be over here and paddling around and getting a few waves and, yeah, hopefully feeling confident going into the event. Yeah, nice. And, I mean, let's do a quick recap on, I guess, your 2024 so far. I mean, for those that follow you on social media, mate, you've been uh, you've been out and about. You've been putting the kilometres in along the Australian coastline. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean... Mainly just down in Tassie, but you definitely do a lot of driving there. But yeah, I mean, me and Colin drove, I flew to WA and yeah, drove across over here. So that's like, you know, a good three or four days driving um, just to get over here. But yeah, I've, I mean, yeah, it's been trying to get as many ways as I can when it's physically possible. Yeah. And Colin's based over in WA now, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He's living in Dunsborough. Yeah. Um, is pretty you know central to a lot of the good waves you see in clips and stuff over there and yeah he's been loving it and i definitely think it can you know really help you surfing and you're just surfing consistent waves all the time which you know i was over in wa i think it was like 2021 maybe i spent like almost a year there and i noticed that you know your surfing definitely improves when you're surfing in waves that are like for example in tazzy you would be you get the surf you get in wa once every three months whereas in WA you're getting you know good waves every week at least so it's like it's yeah it's a good way to improve your surfing yeah yeah definitely mate and um speaking about ways to improve your surfing I'm pretty keen to uh pick your brain on your your pro model um I understand some of the graphics it was something you came up with yourself right the spider webs yeah yeah I mean um I sort of started doing this drawing stuff again like probably five six years ago and i um you know hit chain up with a few ideas like with some boards and um we never ended up going anywhere with them but i think it maybe put his idea in put the idea in his head about how i was like you know a keen artist and doing some drawings and i make some clothes on the side um and yeah i think you know like maybe a couple of years ago he just sent me a message and asked me what favorite like color colorways would be for like a board model where I'm like oh this might be going somewhere and yeah next thing you know he's like oh we want to make your board model and I was, I was obviously pretty shocked um because I never thought I'd have that opportunity but um extremely stoked at the same time and yeah he was um pretty keen for me to you know have a bit of free reign over uh, yeah the graphics on the bottom of the board so like we um first we had the scorpion and and then the next range we um worked together and got the cobwebs on the top which was um we originally had a different idea to um go on the bottom of the board but the way it gets printed didn't work so we had to scrap that one and yeah we ended up coming up with this other cobweb which had, um yeah it turned out pretty thick i think and what about the the template itself mate i mean every every kind of pro board is, is pretty unique to that rider what kind of thought process did you put into to your shape well it's definitely like a wider board slightly more narrow at the nose which is what Shane's always had me riding um but the most like different thing in the board that um is more crucial to me living in colder waters is um it's all about like how much flex it's got um like living down in Tassie when you're surfing shippies I think it's pretty essential for me at least anyway to have a board that um gonna have a little bit more give in it when you're um going over those bumps or the steps and um, obviously the board's going to be more rigid in those waters. So, um, yeah, we're pretty keen to make a board that was obviously going to be able to ride well in, uh, like technical ways such as rampy ways, but to have a bit more give for, um, those critical moments of the wave. 
Have you ever lost any boards out at Shippies? Yeah, I have actually. I um, I've lost lost two boards out there. Pain in the ass. As in completely vanished, gone forever, or just all the way onto the inside, not worth the risk to recover. So, um, two of them have just been swallowed. Like one of them was only like six. <laughs> yeah, just I've. I popped up and my leash is snapped and I never saw it again. It was just gone. And same with the other one. It just slowly at the bay and uh, there was no skis or anything. So, it, yeah, I mean, it's hard to see at the best of times that you're out there in the bay. So, yeah, yeah I don't know where that one went either. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, hopefully it's uh, maybe made its way to the other side of the continent and some little grommies picked it up and ripping into some shorey somewhere. Oh, that will be a dream come true for them. Hopefully, hopefully it does. Uh, all right, mate. We're going to move on to talk about some pretty important stuff. Um, by far, probably, I would have to say, one of the biggest international bodybuilding events on the calendar, not just for this year, but probably from the last few years, which is the you know the grand welcoming back of the Shark Island Challenge in yeah. Cronulla. Um, I mean, it's... The who's who of bodyboarding is going to be there. Got a six-week waiting period with, you know, a chance of extending that just to ensure that they get the best conditions, mate. And part of that that invitation list is not only yourself but your brother, mate. There's a pretty interesting story from what I've been told about the whole process for you to get into this event. I'm going to let you tell the story. Yeah, I mean... We me and Colin have been talking to the guys in Shark Island for a while and um you know, they were saying they were really keen to have us in the event, which we'll be extremely grateful for. Um and obviously, you know, pretty chuffed with the opportunity. However, it just seems maybe in on my behalf, I didn't know enough about the event to know that it was hundred percent going ahead or whatever. And then um they they kind of asked me before I knew the full details of the event if I was available and I'd spoken to my brother Colin who was obviously living in WA to so work face to face and they'd given up the rough date and I was under the impression like we because we've been planning this trip um, overseas like to Europe this year and I was under the impression we might have been away for it so I told Shane that we weren't going to be there for it and then Colin didn't do it intentionally or whatever, but he got the invite as well. But without talking to me first, he kind of confirmed that he was keen to go on the event. But I think on his half, he knew a bit more about the event than I did. <laughs> um, and yeah, it ended up being this, this, like a bit of a fuck up because obviously I wasn't, didn't want to turn that down at all. Like, never my intention. But by the time, you know, word had got back to WA, Tasmania, and I sort of messaged them saying, oh, man, I'm sorry. I thought I was going to be away, but we're not. Um, yeah, it was a bit too late and I'd missed my boat. And I was obviously, you know, pretty rattled by this. And I mean, like, it, it takes a lot yeah. longer for mail, to, mail and telephone calls to get a Tassie, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've got my service down there. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so, mate, let's fast forward to obviously then you know, how it came to getting into the event. Because obviously you made the short list of the online trials. Um, you know, you came up against some pretty pretty epic entries. Um, but, mate, you got through. Got through. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, it was an extremely tight um, contest with the online trials because there was, like, some amazing videos in there. So I was, um, you know, didn't want to get my hopes up. But I was, yeah, I put in my best ways that um, I thought would stand a chance. And yeah, I was lucky enough to, um, yeah, get through. So that was sick. Get the old nod. Get the old nod. Yeah. Um, oh, I was, yeah, you know, it's super, super stoked because, you know, two spots out of however many entries, it's, um, you know, it um, wasn't always guaranteed. Um, but yeah, I was, I was, you know, the way they had it chippies, I was, thought were pretty cool. So I was, I was kind of always hoping that it might, you know, it might set a chance to get in. 
Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the wave itself. I mean, to a little bit of a degree, there's some similarities between Shark Island and obviously your, I don't know, can you call Shippies a local break? Can anyone call Shippies a local break? Uh, I mean, there's probably a handful of guys that I would call locals down there for sure. Um, and you but, would you would be in that mix, I assume, both you and Cohen. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, it's not my local everyday surf that I go and have after work. But I mean, as much as a local surfer can be at shipping, I, I would say you know, like there's a few guys in Tassie that are still holding it down, which is cool. And and I mean, Shark Island. Have, have you actually surfed the place yourself? I have. I have been Shark Island once. But it was actually me, my mate Jeff Swan, and uh, Coppel Emery, or Dick Emery. Um, we all went up for the Cone Bodyboard premiere yep. in Cronulla. And we went up on a Friday, and the Cone premiere was on Saturday. But we got to Cronulla and got to be excited. And we went out to the, the bowling club on Friday. And I, <laughs> yeah, we had way too many beers. And I think we might have all slept like an hour. And then we are staying in Cronulla, like in the heart of Cronulla, and we woke up pretty banged up, and we looked out the front, like, oh, the island's on, we're like, oh, shit. Better and go. We all, like, yeah, we just all, like, hopped out of bed and hopped straight in our wetsuits and walked down. Um, but, yeah, it ended up being kind of, like, six foot and pretty low tide, and, yeah, I was definitely in the right mind state to be surfing the wave of that consequence. So, um, so your memories yeah. of surfing... Uh, a wave of consequence such as Shark Island you did with a banger of a hangover and you can barely remember it. That's what you're telling me. Oh, I can remember it, but um, yeah, I definitely found the wave quite challenging, but I'm sure it's challenging as well when you're um, still got your wits about you. So, you know, it's a very heavy wave and it's got lots of curveballs that it throws at you, um, but I think I was just a little bit slow on the uptake that day, which probably didn't help. <laughs> Mate, well, okay, so let's let's discuss the, I guess, the field of competitors. I mean, I, I I can't get them all off my tongue in one breath, but mate, there is an absolute bucket load of of world titles amongst just a handful of the competitors alone. On top of that, you've got a uh, solid breed of local guys, uh, a solid you know breed of of veterans that have performed well in the past. I mean. <laughs> I'm just I'm constantly scrolling through this. I mean, you've got you've got current you know IBC world champion Tanner McDaniel. <laughs> you got his chaperone, coach, and mentor Mike Stewart, um, Louis Finnegan, Jace Finlay. You got Lester, Lily Pollard, representing uh, a pretty unique field of of, of individuals in that water. Um, Jack Baker, Mickey Osler, PLC, um, obviously another Taz, Taswegian. Uh, Harley Ward's there, um, Winnie, Jerry Houston. Um, pfft, there's so many. Uh, Hub's there. I mean, how do you, how do you kind of put those, those nerves aside when you when you're going to be coming up alongside any number of those guys in the lineup in Arashi? Oh man, I mean, I couldn't tell you. I've only been in probably a count of less than one hand how many comps I've been in and most of them have been in you know this little tazzy comps with your mate um the only like big comp I've been in was the Kiama Nationals and it was one foot at Kiama Beach and it was just a joke <laughs> but um this is definitely you know uh gonna be a little bit more how you going than that um I think obviously there's gonna be a lot of nerve surrounding you know like um the wave itself, having not surfed the heaps and um, not fully knowing how to, you know, which ones are the good ones or, um, but yeah, and then, you know, you throw in all those names you've mentioned and they're in your heat as well. It's like, there is a lot of, you know, um, you probably will feel a bit of added pressure, but um, I think I'm just more grateful for the opportunity and um, it already feels like a win that I'm, you know, in the comp itself. So I'm just going to go out there and do my best and, um, you know, try and get a couple on the day. And obviously I'd love to get a, you know, a smoker in the comp. Um, 
Well, one of the most recent kind of announcements that the uh, the boys from the event committee have announced is that there's uh, a new inaugural induction award, the, the Ryan Ringer McKinnon Award, which mm, will be I have seen that. yeah, so presented to the rider who throws their sanity per se aside and sends it during during the event. Um, so winner takes all thousand bucks, mate. Do you think you could put yourself in that kind of frame of mind to just go? absolutely ham and you know balls to the wall um <laughs> it um i you know i'm obviously going to have a, a solid track at a solid one if there's a chance that i'm going to make it or at least you know there's a but if it looks like a dead close down that you know if i can ten foot plus i don't know if that's the fuck can we cover the yeah. medical fuel <laughs> i can hit the brink on my back yeah but, um that's fair it's also incentive and you know, it'd be awesome to take that prize home. Um, you know, even if you didn't take out the comp or whatever, I'm sure someone would be stoked to grab that. And, you know, I'm going to give it my best shot. Um, but, yeah, I'm obviously going to try and be calculated about my decisions out at the island. It's a way that, you, you know, you don't want to be messing with. Mate, and what do you what do you do if you win? What if you do if you take home the big prize purse, the big giant novelty check? Do you go halves with Cohen? And is it vice versa? <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, I'm sure I'd doubt it with you here, but um, I reckon I could probably use the money, to be honest. <laughs> um, but, oh, yeah, I mean, it'd be, you know, it wouldn't feel real. It'd take a long time to think in and um, if that happened. But, I mean, you know, anything's possible. But, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be a pretty interesting combo. I reckon there's a lot of big names in it. So, um, yeah, it should be a good show, I reckon, either way. Mate, um Obviously, again, like I said, Shark Island, it's, it's a wave of consequence. Um, you know, you surf waves of consequence all the time. Obviously, we haven't seen an event like this in Australia for, for a number of years for a variety of reasons. Um, mm-hmm. Do you think this is potentially a resurgence of, I guess, big wave events, not only here in, in Oz, but, but maybe abroad? I mean, obviously, we've got some good locations on the IBC World Tour, but I mean, there are some that are clearly missing. Um, but what do you think? Do you think there's um, something on the spectrum for us to expand? Do you, do you think Australia as as a whole could work together to to maybe expand on what these guys are doing up there on the east coast? Do you think there's scope in Tassie to hold a similar type of event at Shippies? Oh, I mean, yeah. Firstly, what they're what they've done with the Shark Island and the amount of effort they've put in um, in promoting it, I think that their campaign they have made is awesome. It you know got a lot of media attention, and you know bodyboarders all around the world are going to be tuned in to watch this event. And I'm, you know, I'm sure just like me, if I was a spectator as well, I you know I couldn't wait to watch it. But, um, and yeah, I I mean, as for the Shippy comp, I mean, we'll take a lot of. Um, organization well, there's a lot more red tape down there in tassie mate a lot more what's that a lot more red tape down there in tassie yeah, i mean anything possible it would be awesome i would love for there to be a comp down there i think you know it's no longer a fucking secret everyone knows about this um as i found out last year well it's been busier than ever yep. um so and how's that affecting your place in the lineup I mean, you're not getting as many waves as you would on a day when there's five guys out that are your mate. Um, you still, you know, I still get picked on the ones that I want, but there's often one that you would have gone if someone else wasn't there. But you know, you don't want to be like, you know, greedy or whatever. Is there um, a, is there a is there a good level of respect down there at the moment? Yeah, like. It's still there. There's definitely respect, but, you know, some people come down and um, they've been given words, you know, they might go down on a sneaky day. They've been given words by the locals, such as Marty, to, um, you know, you know, keep this session under wraps and don't blow it up all of your social media. Standard, um, yep. As, as these are the days that, you know, being a Tasmanian, we live for, you know, the sneaky days where the windows might, only be a couple of hours in the morning. No one's going to fly down for it. But, you know, if you're there, you get pumping waves. And we off, we had a couple of guys come down 
um, from interstate for this swell and they got this sneaky window and Marty had told him, you know, don't blow this up, whatever. Anyway, what do you know? Next thing they do, they put up a YouTube edit, Instagrams on the day. The works. Sneaky, sneaky ship turn session, no one out. On the same fucking day that it happened. It's like, you guys are so disrespectful. I'm not going to mention any names, but, um, yeah, it's like little things like that. that probably, if they keep happening, it's going to get, you know, things might have to change. But at the moment, you know, everyone's having a good time and everyone's getting wise and it's cool. But I think we just, yeah, I just hope it stays that way. And did I hear that there's a, a bit of a kind of, kind of non-for-profit kind of organisation safety crew that's formed down there? now is that right yeah yeah so um you've got um bob booth who's like a local tassie legend he's been surfing down there for years and um always been around the traps and um another guy richie hassett who's noah hassett um who's like a grommy down in tassie he's been covered up recently in surfing shippies a lot um yeah they sort of have been the backbone of that um organization and yeah they've sort of chipped in to get this ski and um was like it hit it with a deep fib and um a lot of our local tassie guys that surf shippies such as myself have done like some you know big wave rescue training um scenarios um and yeah richie and bob are either there on the big days or most of the time when people are surfing just you know watching out for everyone who wipes out they'll go and pick them up they'll help you get your board and um yeah i mean it's amazing to see that happen down there because you know Growing up, surfing it, it was like, you know, you, you pull into a bomb and you don't make it. You, you just get end up in the middle of the bay, you've lost your board, your fins, and you've got to find your own way in. And, you know, there wasn't people looking out for each other so much, you know, 10 years ago, as there is, you know, as of the last couple of years since I started that. And I think it's, it's really cool. Well, I remember and, um, one of the more yeah. memorable, I guess, wipeouts that, that I that I saw that was, was documented, and again probably 10 years ago now was uh you and donachi's kind of pov footage uh from his movie six months where yep. he copped that that kind of two-way beating there and i mean that was that was so you know real for a lot of people to see that from that that perspective <laughs> like i, I can yeah, only imagine uh, how how frightening that must be to just be bobbing up and down on the inside with that avalanche coming towards you yeah i mean I think it helps out there because, you know, you're so full of adrenaline that it all happens quite quick and, um, you know, I think in the moment you're like, oh, you know, you're just trying to get out of the situation if you don't fully sink it in. But, yeah, when, you, when you've when had a hold down like that and you pop up and then more often than not, there's, you know, another one behind it and you're just scrambling to get to the channel to try and get under it. Um, and, yeah, that um, video from six months of viewing was pretty... Um, good analogy of it for sure <laughs> uh mate i'm gonna hit you with one or two more kind of pointy questions then we'll wrap it up and i'll let you get back to your uh barbecue on the desert mate um if you had to choose any other state to call home outside of tassie where would it be um it's gonna be wa soon i think Ooh. yeah i'm, I'm gonna, gonna move over and um, live with my brother cohen yeah gotcha so down in dunny yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got a pretty good job up there, and he originally came over to. He's a he works in a medical field, correct? Yeah, yeah. So he studied nursing like yep. myself, but um, just got lucky out and he was working at Cole as a checkout chick, and um, went over there just to kind of. He was actually working at Coles at the time, was out at North Point, and heard some guy talking to another surfer about. Um, they were looking for nurses in the mines and he said, oh, my wife, um, a nurse, but she's about to have a kid, so we can't do it. And he's like, well, do you know any other nurse? And Colm was sitting right next to her and then they got talking, they went in, he gave him his number, he seated in the interview questions more or less and next thing you know, Colm's on 150 grand a year in the mines, so he was pretty set. Catching. Catching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mate, and the last question, obviously... With Shark Island and Shippies on the list, if you had to choose another one or two locations uh, in Oz to hold, say, a big wave world tour, well, big wave, just a big wave tour, 
Where would they be? Would they all? Oh. Would they all be right? Because we're we're two from two here with with Shark Island and Chippies. We're just throwing a couple of left to to even out the field. Mm, okay, so um, two more big wave events in Australia that aren't Chippies and Shark Island. Yep. Um, well, I mean, you could have one in Victoria at Learners. I mean that that could be an option. Yep. So a big wave. Well, I think there'd I mean, be about as much red tape for that event as there would be with uh, red tape for for running an event at Shippies with uh, yeah, I mean, having parks on yep. your, on your back. Yeah, I mean, um, you're not going to hold one at the right. That's if someone went up drowning. Yeah. Um, and there's probably a bit of red tape with that too. Um, I mean, there's a couple of rights over in South. Like, there's a right in South Wales I could think of that would probably be a good place for an event. Um, but I don't know how you go about that either. I don't know if it would go down too well. Um, <laughs> other than that, I mean, I'm trying to think of other sort of big ways spots. But nothing's jumping to mind. So they're probably your two best bets, I reckon. Well, mate, watch your space. Maybe uh, the powers that be with with the crew behind the Shark Island event, and maybe a bit more support from um, Ali and the crew at Rippy. We can um, put our thinking caps on and, and work on a bigger game plan for twenty twenty five. Mark, sounds good, man. I'm I'm keen. All right, mate. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, on behalf of myself and all the crew at the closeout, mate, we want to wish not only you but your brother all the best uh, for the event. We're, we're pretty confident you guys are going to hold your own out there. Again, um, you both have giant balls of steel, and um, that's, <laughs> that's kind of what it takes to, to get air over the line at an event like that. Oh, well, cheers having me on the podcast, mate, and um, I'll send Colin your regard. <laughs> cheers, mate. All the best. Take care. All right. Cheers, Benny. Thanks, mate. So that wraps things up for our final special guest on this episode of the Closeout Bodyboarding Podcast. Um, Big shout out to Sammy Thomas coming to us live from somewhere in the desert in South Oz. Um, As as you heard, he didn't want to give too much away, um, which is pretty much the way it goes over there. In the in the deep south, but uh, Watto, mate, what's your kind of take on um, on yeah, I guess future big wave bodyboarding events here in Oz? I mean, Sammy spoke about you know throwing lunas into the mix and 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 shippies if it's um you know completely viable. Of course, uh, obviously there would be a lot of hurdles to overcome considering those two waves sit smack bang in the middle of national parks, which is completely polarizing to what Shark Island is, you know, essentially being smack bang in the middle of Cronulla. I mean, where where would you go, Watto? Like, if, is there any any big wave Ooh. spots on, on your radar that you think would be doable? I mean, the box technically still ticks that, ticks that box, the box on the box. Well, well I, I think the thing is... Um... Some of these big wave spots, you'd have to be pretty careful you didn't get chased out with a stick. You'd, um, <laughs> a stick or something yeah. else, something a bit sharper than a stick. <laughs> or, or maybe some things flying past your bullets, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you'd have to be very careful about where you went. But, oh, look, you know, there's... <clears throat> oh, you think even Shippy Shippies is in a in a national park, some of these other spots as well. Um, yeah, like Shark, Shark Island, like you said it a number of times, or it's, it's sort of got that amphitheater to it. Whereas a lot of the other ones, you'd have to stream or something. And oh, you know, I've been on the phone to you when you're down near Lunas, and um, it sounds like we've got a couple of tin cans going and a bit of string with the phone reception down there. So you're not going to stream it real well, are you? Yeah, and look, there, there re- I mean, there really isn't the viewing platform at Lunas. Yes, there's a, f- a, f- a few tiny little clearings at the top of the cliff where, you know, your your filmer and, and cameraman can, can lay low. But, I mean, if you're going to run an event of that kind of stature, you would expect that a bunch of people want to come along and watch it. Um, and places like Luna, Lunas, unfortunately, just don't have that, that infrastructure. I mean, it'd be just disastrous for the environment to have even even 30 people standing on the cliff there would be 
you know, I mean, you could you couldn't even write a risk assessment for it. It just uh, it'd be impossible. When you think about it as well, if you were to have a couple of events, let's say you had four or five events uh, with that sort of thing, and you had the same waiting periods as Shark Island. Yep. That's or what's the Shark Island waiting period? Six weeks. Six weeks. Yep. That's twenty four weeks of waiting periods if you had four of them. Yeah, it's a a lot. It's a long time for people to be hanging around. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, you know, with the the, the systems that um, the Shark Island team have, you know, in in place, essentially the traffic light system. So you got your your amber alert uh, before it goes green alert. So I mean, that's 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 a good way of doing it. Um, and I mean, most big scale surf contests do a similar thing. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, it easier for more domestic riders to commit to something like that uh, in comparison to international guys Um, because, you know, again, it's not (laughs) Australia's this big, beautiful continent smack bang in the middle of the ocean, but it's actually a long way away and very expensive for people to get here. Oh, absolutely. It is very expensive. It is cost prohibitive um, for us to leave or for people to come here. So so, that is is a a pretty big consideration. and especially if you're taking that time out. But, oh, look, it's all, all sort of food for thought, I guess. Um, but, yeah, super excited to see the, you know, the Shark Island thing. And I think watching guys like Sam and Colin build content, like clips out of um, some of these big wave spots is, is pretty exciting as well. Maybe maybe a digital tour again. Um, and they submit big waves. Maybe that that should be on the card. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it seems like it's worked. I mean, I think again, and and we're, like we're all armchair critics, mate. So everyone's going to have an opinion. Um, but so far, what the guys have done is incredible. Um, I mean, <clears throat> Sam um, is definitely more than deserving to be in that that lineup. Obviously, there was a lot of controversy surrounding, you know, a bunch of other names that didn't make the cut. Um, but you know, mate. You can't, you can't have everyone there. You just can't. Um, no. But all good. No. Well, folks, I reckon we're going to wrap things up here. On behalf of Chris and myself, we want to say a big thank you once again for all your support. Uh, to everyone that's listening and sharing our potty across the world, big shout out to Michael Jennings, uh, Sammy Watson, and, of course, um, our missing in action lounge chair expert, Mick, Mal- Mick Malloy. I mean, Shane Britton. <laughs> Just speaking of that, have you uh, have you seen Mick Boy in the news lately? No, but I'm I am a big fan of uh, a podcast he does with Titus O'Reilly. It's on my my daily playlist. There, what? Why? What's I'm, Mick done? I'm just going to say, I think Mick's name really should be Donald Bradman because he's well and truly batting above his average. Oh, I know what you're look. talking about. Yes. <laughs> Big, yeah. big, big, big. That's what big. we say. A final cheers to Mick Malloy. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing all right. Yeah, he's doing all right. <laughs> so once again, folks, uh, yeah, big thanks. Uh, stay tuned. We've got plenty of potties still up our sleeve uh, for the rest of 2024. And obviously watch this space as the Shark Island Challenge event for 2024 unravels and hopefully creates one of the greatest bodyboarding spectacles we've all seen. Take care.